Hi everyone and welcome to the Penguin Prof channel. Today I'm going to be talking about how to approach histology, the study of tissues, or what I like to call how to love the tree. Um, this video is not going to be an exhaustive list um, and showing you lots of different pictures of tissues. It's going to be more how to approach this because that's really uh, the struggle that I find my students usually have. Um, most uh, textbooks and histology atlases will show you just hundreds and thousands of pictures, but what they tend not to do is to give you a real plan of attack of how to go about figuring out which tissue is which. Um, usually they'll start by saying, okay, there's four categories of tissues, and the first thing you have to do is figure out what category the tissue that you're looking at is in. Um, that sounds great, but it's actually really hard to do. So I find that actually having a tool, a dichotomous key that you can use is a lot more helpful than just saying, well, figure out what category it is. Because quite frankly, when you're just starting out in this, um, that's a really, really difficult task. So we're going to use um, this dichotomous key. There are a lot of them out there, but um, I like some um, that are like this, you'll see why. Um, because it starts with one very fundamental question. Are the cells close together? Um, are they tightly packed, in other words? If yes, we're going to use this side of the key. If no, we're going to use the other side. So let's tango and see how this works. Here's your first question. Name this tissue. It's kind of daunting. You look at it. Um, where do you start? Well, of course, you like to start where it says start here. I, I like that a lot. Are the cells close together? Are they tightly packed? Uh, certainly the answer is yes. You don't see any spaces in between the cells. The next question, is this tissue uh, lining a free surface or is there a free edge? Well, that's what this is. There is clearly a free edge. So the answer to that question is yes. So I'm going to darken out the other side of this tree to make it more clear uh, where we're going. It is an epithelial tissue. Now the next question, is it one layer or many layers of cells? Well, I hope, hopefully that's not too difficult to see that there are many, many layers of cells. So now we move here. Now we know that it is a striated epithelium. Striated meaning multiple layers of cells. If we look at the shape of the cells closest to the lumen or the edge in this case, are they flat? And the answer is yes, which means we get to stop right there. This is stratified squamous epithelium. Isn't that wonderful? One down, eight to go. Name this tissue. Okay, so here we go. Now we're on the other side of the key. Are the cells close together? And the answer is no. These are the cells down here. They're um, the dark parts right here. Um, they're widely spaced and there's stuff in between. Um, the next question, so we know we're looking at connective tissue here. Now, are the cells in fluid? And the answer is no. The next question, are the cells inside lacunae? Lacunae, this means crater, and it's easier to see when, when it's not so small, but these cells are actually inside little teeny depressions that we call lacunae, and you can usually see those. So the answer to that question, are they sitting in little craters? The answer is yes. Are there canaliculi radiating from the lacunae? Canaliculi means little canals, and those are all the little lines that you see here coming out of the cells inside the lacunae. So the answer is yes, you do see those. We know we're looking at bone. Do you see a concentric ring structure? Boy, I hope you do. The answer to that is certainly yes. We are looking at compact bone. This, by the way, is one of the most distinctive types of tissue, so I consider this a, a pretty easy one, and you'll once you see it a couple times, I, I don't think you're going to have a problem with it. But I'm basically, again, just illustrating how this tree works. What about this one? Name this tissue. So again, first question, are the cells close together? And the answer is certainly not. Are the cells in a fluid? No. Are the cells inside lacunae? Do you see any kind of depression where the cells are sitting? Uh, no, I don't see that. Are, the, are there fibers that are densely packed in a matrix? No, I don't see any fibers in here at all. I do like this question. Do you see big white blobs? Well, yeah, you know, actually I do. These are big white blobs. So what we're looking at is adipose tissue. I just love that one. I think that's funny. <laughs> big white blobs. It's very descriptive. So of course, uh, what you're actually looking at, these are the cells, this, these are the, the cell membranes here, um, and these are the nuclei, the dark staining nuclei, and these are big lipid droplets inside, and they do look like big white blobs. 
So this is going pretty well so far, right? Yeah, so let's keep going. Name this tissue. Are the cells tightly packed? Um, or any spaces in between? Certainly, you can see that the cells are in fact tightly packed. Um, do you see a free edge? And yes, you do. Um, this is actually glandular tissue, actually. These little guys are lining um, an opening. It's actually a, a duct. Is there a single layer of cells? Yes. Are the cells flat? No, they're not flat. Are they square? Actually, they're square. They're the shape of little cubes. So this tissue is called simple cuboidal epithelia. This is a really common tissue that you'll see in um, many glands. At first glance, this kind of looks like uh, a mess. Oh boy, here we go. The cells are not close together. They are widely spaced with material in between. Are the cells in fluid? No. Are the cells inside lacunae? Do you see those little depressions? Because I sure don't. Um, do you see fibers densely packed in a matrix? Um, actually, no. Are they big white blobs? No, it's certainly not big white blobs. The answer is you see three different types of fibers present in equal amounts. This is areolar tissue. It's also known as loose fibrous connective tissue. You'll see this tissue a lot, especially in um, all of your epithelial tissue slides. When you look at them, if you look underneath the epithelia, you usually see this tissue. It's really common. It underlies most epithelia throughout the body. Boy, this one, if you haven't seen it before, you might think, wow, this is very distinctive looking. So what is that? The cells certainly are very close together, but do you see a free edge? If you were to scan along the slide, you would certainly not see a free edge. It's not covering anything. Are the cells elongated, tube-like, or spindle-like? Most definitely they are. Are the cells striated? Um, we're talking about all these little lines that are running perpendicular to the length of the actual fiber. So that is definitely striated, heavily striated. Are the cells branching? No. So we know the answer now. This is skeletal muscle tissue. Extremely easy to spot once you know what you're looking for. Um, it's, these uh, muscle fibers are multinucleated. These are all the little nuclei. The cells are extremely long and thin. Number seven, name this tissue. This is actually kind of a tricky one because it looks striated at first glance, but it's not. The cells are definitely closely packed together and there is a free edge. So that is yes, we know that we're looking at epithelia. Do you see a single layer of cells? Yes, if you look closely, and this is the, the key, when you look at these tall skinny cells, even though it might look like there's more than one layer of them, there's actually only one. There is one layer of tall skinny cells. Are the cells flat? No. Are they square? No. Are they rectangular or do the cells vary in height and are the nuclei located at different levels? Yes. This is called pseudostratified columnar epithelia. Um, this actually is also ciliated, so you may have to learn the name pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelia. <laughs> Isn't histology just fabulous? You'll see this tissue a lot in respiratory tissue. Um, I'm sorry, respiratory sections um, like the trachea and so on. These little hairs help to sweep um, mucus and uh, other particles and uh, keep them out of the lungs. All right, we're getting to the end here. Name this tissue. This can be a hard one, but let's go through the tree. The cells are not close together. There is a matrix in between. The cells are not in fluid, but they do sit in lacunae, just like the bone, but this is obviously not bone, but we're still on this side of that little fork here. Um, do you see canaliculi radiating from the lacunae like we did in bone? No, we don't see that. So we know we're talking about cartilage. And now we just have to ask the question, do you see fibers in this cartilage or not? And you don't see any fibers, this is hyaline cartilage. This is a type of tissue that's very, very strong, but also flexible. Finally, last but not least, name this tissue. Let's go through the tree. The cells are close together, but there is no free edge. 
So that first question is a no. Are they elongated, tube-like, and spindle-like? Most definitely. Are they striated? Most definitely. And are they branching? And in this case, unlike the skeletal muscle we saw before, yes, they are. This is cardiac muscle. Um, something that might help you to remember, if you look at this uh, tissue, especially if you look at it a little bit larger, you'll notice that there are very fine kind of zipper-like structures that go through it, and those are called intercalated discs. And when you see those, you know you're looking at cardiac muscle and not skeletal muscle. So we've gone through the vast majority of the um, forks on this dichotomous key, and I hope that uh, you're pretty happy with yourself, and I thought I'd throw a penguin in there just to make you smile if you weren't smiling. Um, I really hope that this is a, a tool that you can use as you approach the field of histology. I know it can be daunting, but I think that if you take kind of a, um, a, a tree-like approach, if you will, your brain will start to see the patterns. And even though you can't use a tree on an exam, obviously, please don't use a tree on, the, on an exam, um, what happens is as you use the tree over and over again, your brain will start to recognize what's what. And after a while, things that maybe before all looked the same will start to jump out at you, and you will start to see the pattern, and your brain will make sense of it. So I hope that was helpful. As always, thank you for visiting the Penguin Prof channel. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Good luck.